Hello there YouTube. This is NecroStevo and it's time for us to go over the rules and regulations, team building, all that fun stuff for the Kanto Classic competition. Now if you have not heard, of course, the Kanto Classic is going to be a battle spot competition. So of course that's going to be 3DS, but that's two battle spots that are hosted by Nintendo. And you can only use the first 149 Pokemon because you can't use Mew and Mewtwo, or Mewtwo rather. Uh, also, notable thing here, no items. So, of course, that means no Mega Pokemon, which is good. Otherwise, we would see a lot of Mega Kangaskhan. Um, of course, you are actually allowed to use Pokemon that don't have the Pentagon on them from 6th Gen. So, if you have any old gem sitting around, like I have a Sucker Punch Golem that I bred back in 4th Gen, and you move to your Sucker Punch onto it, you can use those in this competition. And of course, expect people who uh, who Jin or whatever Pika Hex their Pokemon to have access to all those old moves as well. But I did just want to go through the rules pretty briefly. Uh, this is a singles 6v6 competition with a pretty lengthy battle timer at 60 minutes per battle. So I would expect to see a decent amount of stall as well. Um, we're also going to go through just some threats you might expect to see in the competition. So... Um, yeah, so if you haven't already registered, the registration period for this does close pretty soon. I'm posting this most likely on Friday night. Friday, Friday, really, really close to midnight probably. But uh, if you haven't already registered, definitely go ahead and do it. The prize for battling in this is a Dragonite with Barrier, which of course is a reference to Lance. Uh, back in first gen, Lance's Dragonite new Barrier, and it never really learned that move, so it was like, why is your... Dragon I have barrier. Not necessarily super useful in battle or anything, though it can make for a really annoying um, special defensive barrier set with Roost and then just some coverage moves. But anyways, though, if you want that nice little prize, you will have to participate in at least three battles in this competition. Uh, so if you have any questions, of course, all the rules are up on the Pokemon Global Link, and you do have to register through the Global Link. Uh, but let's just take a look at an example team that I built. Um, I guess we'll just do the team at a glance here so you can look through but um, there are just several things that you need to prepare for in this battle competition if you actually want to if you're just playing to have fun like I'm sort of doing then it doesn't matter as much but if you want to win a bunch there are things to be uh, privy to I'm going to link in the description a link to the smog on page where they are talking about the Kanto classic uh, 18 pages of just people discussing different sets and things like that. And also they have a really nice uh, ranking system that I do agree with. We're going to go down that a little bit later. And they also have the um, usage statistics from Antar. So uh, if you just want to see what people have been using on Pokemon Showdown, you have the ability to do that too. But let's just take a look at an example team that I built really quickly. Um, we have a pretty, at a first glance, it looks like a pretty basic Rest Talk Snorlax. But since we only have to worry about the first 252 Pokemon, that eliminates so many things. I just say 252 Pokemon, I just got off work. I'm a, li I'm a little tired, excuse me. That eliminates a lot of things. First of all, that means no dark types. Second of all, that means psychic types once again reign supreme. Third of all, that means the only steel type is Magneton. Uh, we actually only have three fairies in this format, Mr. Mime, Clefable, and Wigglytuff, uh, because there's no point in using Eviolite because you can't hold an item, so those are the only three you'll probably see. And, uh, of course, one-hit KO moves are fair game. Uh, something like Minimize Clefable is very fair game as well, which I will be using one of my own if I team test and I end up liking it. I won't be using the really, really annoying Stored Power Minimize uh, cosmic power one, but yeah, you're going to expect to see some things. Now I would, um, I would team build generally. There's not a lot of super powerful Pokemon in first gen. There's a few, but generally a lot of Pokemon rely on boosting moves to really raise their attack power, dragon dance, swords dance, even curse here. Those are going to be what you see a lot of people trying to set up and then sweep through. Now it's difficult to throw a single wall in front of that. And it's also pretty hard to, to check a lot of different Pokemon with just six Pokemon, even when you know what the top used Pokemon are going to be. Now, you, um, I would 
ex- prepare for some type of entry hazards on most teams. Like I have, for example, a Defog Zapdos right here. Uh, only a few Pokemon in this format learn Rapid Spin, such as Starmie and Cloyster and Kabutops. So your your spinners are a little bit limited, but your Defog users are even more limited because Zapdos, uh, of course, the other two legendary birds are quad weak to Stealth Rock, so they're not as reliable as Defoggers. Um, and then the other birds, without their me- Mega Evolutions or even Scyther, just aren't as reliable. So definitely keep those entry hazards in mind. And speaking of that, you probably want to run your own entry hazards too, uh, since there aren't as many Pokemon that can really utilize entry hazards as well in this format, the users for those are going to be pretty predictable too. Um, do keep in mind that some uh, ortho- unorthodox Pokemon like Clefable do get access to Stealth Rocks. Uh, Spike users are few and far in between with Tentacruel and um, Omastar and Cloyster and maybe one other Pokemon having access to spikes back in that generation. Uh, but nevertheless, there aren't that many levitating or flying types, so spike stacking is going to be pretty effective in this format. Now I'm just going to go through uh, the the Smogon list here and kind of give my two cents on each Pokemon on the viability ranking. Whether or not I agree with the ranking or not, it's important to prepare for at least the, the C rank and above Pokemon here. Snorlax, I definitely think is a prime candidate here. It's so incredibly difficult to break through and um, that's even without it getting up some curses. I do think most Norlax will be running sleep, uh, rest talk rather. And of course with that strategy you have two other move slots and it's not generally wise to run a Snorlax that can be walled by Gengar because Gengar is going to be so popular and so in that last slot you're going to see things like other coverage moves like Crunch or maybe Ice Punch. Uh, you might even see some Snorlax running Fisher, since it can be bred Fisher, and um, Fisher would be pretty annoying to encounter on a Snorlax, especially if you're trying to set up alongside it. Now, Clefable is actually, I would put Clefable over Snorlax as far as uh, popularity and viability for this format. Being mono fairy type and having two fantastic abilities in Magigar and Unaware are going to make it really hard for a lot of people to pass up. Furthermore, it gets access to Minimize, which now, of course, since uh, Generation 5, I think, you'll get a plus 3 or a sharp, uh, drastic, excuse me, increase to your evasion. So after two Minimizes, your evasion is maxed out. So you want a way to deal with Clefable, and that can be in your own Snorlax. Of course, moves like Stomp, Body Slam, Steamroller, all those don't miss against Pokemon that have used Minimize. And in addition to that, they have their damage doubled. So those are decent ways to kind of tack on some extra damage to Clefable that think they can set up in front of your face. Of course, Clefable is a fairy type, so uh, Clear Smog might be a fantastic way to check it, such as uh, Weezing or Gengar. Clear Smog is not affected by evasion modifiers either, and you'll get a little bit of super effective damage in there. And then of course, Haze or just phasing Clefable out with Roar, of course, Dragon Tail won't work because it's a fairy type, but Roar or Whirlwind are fantastic ways of dealing with it too. But do keep in mind with those options, you are going to go after Clefable. And so if it sets up to a certain point, Stored Power will be doing a lot, or just a Stab Moonblast can really, really hurt. I definitely agree with um, Alakazam being in the a rank here. Uh, Alakazam is basically going to be the premier Psychic type that everyone is using. Because remember, no Dark types. And furthermore, Alakazam is one of the top three fastest Pokemon in the format. Uh, the only thing faster than Alakazam, really, that's notable, is going to be something like Aerodactyl. And with the right investment, Aerodactyl can't one-hit KO Alakazam. Uh, whereas Alakazam can do a lot of shenanigans back, such as Substitute Disable, and stop Aerodactyl from hitting it with uh, any type of coverage move. Um, Alakazam behind a sub can 2-hit KO Aerodactyl pretty easily with Psychic. Uh, and Alakazam also gets weird options like Encore too, so it's not even safe to try to set up in front of one, because he might just lock you into that. I do think most Alakazam will be running solely a Psychic type coverage move, just because of how great Psychic is in this format. You don't really need coverage uh, if you can just spam Psychic and then have your teammates pick up the slack on other Pokemon. You might see some Alakazam with Focus Blast, but I think that'll be relatively rare. Uh, Machamp, you saw that I was running a Machamp. Of course, I'm running a slightly different one than I think what most people will be running with Toxic 
being in the mix there. And I have just enough speed to speed creep something like Clefable uh, that's trying to speed creep. And then my own Clefable that I'm planning on running is going to have a decent speed investment too to outspeed other Clefable. But why is Machamp good in this format? That's because of No Guard. Now with No Guard, of course, Machamp's moves do not miss the opponent and the opponent's moves don't miss Machamp. A little bit of a double-edged sword in a format where one-hit KO moves are permitted. I would expect to see people trying to use Fisher or Sheer Cold from the likes of something like Articuno. Uh, and even Articuno actually gets a Sheer Cold mind reader combination, so that's a, that's a little annoying there. But uh, those moves, of course, will hit Machamp immediately and KO it. Um, even Horn Drill is on some Pokemon like Rhydon and Rapidash, so you definitely want to be aware of the Pokemon that can run those one-hit KO moves. Now, um, Machamp is a nice, it's not really a check to Clefable, but it can make things very difficult for Clefable. Uh, between Dynamic Punch and then if it's uh, an unaware Clefable, running Toxic can really put a timer on Clefable shenanigans. Uh, in conjunction with that, um, other moves such as Stone Edge, or I've even seen some people running specially offensive Machamp with Focus Blast, those moves... The coverage is just fantastic. Um, Machamp is the only Pokemon that I really like running Stone Edge on because it won't miss. Yay. Now, of course, Machamp is really, really susceptible to being burned. That's not uh, an automatic way to deal with it, though, because Machamp might run Guts. Then you just give it a power boost. But I do think No Guard will be more popular overall. Uh, the combination of Slowbro and Clefable, or Slowbro and Snorlax, is going to be very popular just because of the overall synergy between the two. Um, also, Slowbro can throw status around and toxic things or thunder wave them or even get off Scald Burns. And he gets Stab Psychic, which is basically unresisted outside of Magneton in this format. Going to be a really annoying for a lot of people to deal with. Plus, Slowbro really, really uh, promotes switching around because of his Regenerator ability. Uh, as far as dealing with Slowbro goes, it is pretty slow and I don't think Trick Room will be too popular. So it's really going to be, uh, if you see a Slowbro, expect for it to come in often and try to predict it as it comes in to hit it with a coverage move or a double out. Um, I wouldn't get hit by Slowbro too much. It can do Calm Mind, Slack All Shenanigans of its own, and those can be difficult to deal with after it gets a couple of Calm Minds underneath its belt. But that's why you have those same checks in there that will work on Clefable. They'll work on Slowbro too, so keep those in mind. Uh, Chansey is another Pokemon that gets access to Minimize very, very annoyingly. And, uh, of course, even without Eviolite, Chansey takes hits really, really well. Don't sleep on Chansey just because there's no Eviolite in this format. Uh, it still has an amazingly high HP stat, and it can take special hits very well. And it can probably take one physical hit from most Pokemon and then retaliate with Counter. So, uh, I would definitely try to kind of scout out Chansey's moveset before hitting it, necessarily. And that's where um, Machamp is nice, because even if Chansey uses Minimize, Machamp can punch it in the face with no guard, boosted dynamic punches, and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, something to keep in mind with Chansey there. Chansey also gets some random coverage and Thunder Wave. That's good to keep in mind, too. Although I would expect most people to be running Wish, so that it can heal the rest of their team up. Now, of course, in this format, Dragonite is the only Dragon type that most people are going to be using, because it's the only one available. And I just don't see people using Dragonair or Dratini. Uh, just all out attacking. You might see some Dragon Dance ones, but I really expect this to be used as more of a wall breaker. Uh, the prevalence of Cloyster to threaten it with Ice Shard or Icicle um, Spear is very, very real. Or a lot of Pokemon just running Hidden Power Ice in general. So uh, do be aware that Dragonite does get Extreme Speed. And to a lesser extent, he gets Aqua Jet. If you're just really, really worried about Golem or Rhydon, you could hit them with Aqua Jet. Even though you're going to outspeed them anyway, just use Earthquake. Don't use Aqua Jet. But, you know, it's a cool move if you just really want to do that. Um, and, of course, Dragonite can support the team as well. Uh, it can be difficult to take down if it's utilizing Roost alongside Multiscale. So that's another reason you want to get some entry hazards up. Uh, Gengar is another Pokemon that I'm looking forward to using in this competition just because uh, Gengar is relatively versatile. Here I have a sub disable set with Clear Smog and Shadow Ball with max speed and then it's actually designed to take uh, a few hits from things, just not not necessarily to take a hit but that it won't be KO'd. So on some of the frailer Pokemon, just because we don't have to deal with power creep in just the first 149 Pokemon, it's definitely worth playing around with your EVs a little bit 
because uh, you can find more efficient EV spreads if you want to go deal with that. But on Gengar, definitely expect to um, see a lot of Substitute, a lot of Taunt, and a lot of Will-O-Wisp. All three of those options allow it to avoid Sucker Punch from a lot of popular Pokemon such as Golem or Nidoking uh, that will definitely be running Sucker Punch to hit faster Pokemon like Gengar. And of course, if you're facing a Gengar, I wouldn't assume that it's going to just attack and let you Sucker Punch it in the face. And so you might be able to grab some uh, momentum just by predicting it to use a non-attacking move. So that could be very, very useful. Uh, Gengar is a good secondary check to something like Clefable. That's going to be pretty popular. And you actually notice that Gengar can basically, with the right coverage move to it, KO most of these Pokemon above it. Um, it can't really muscle through Snorlax without prior damage, even if you're using uh, Focus Blast. But I, I don't know. I don't like using Focus Blast. But all that aside, Gengar, going to be good, especially with that Levitate ability to avoid Ground-type moves. Um, I'm really excited about using my old school Or Eyes, the Golem. Um, Golem, of course, gets the Sturdy ability, so that means he'll be immune to all those very, very popular one-hit KO moves, so don't be afraid of switching your Golem um, on a Rhydon even if you expected to use Horn Drill. Why, why risk that 30% chance of being one-hit KO'd when you have a Pokemon that's immune to it? Uh, Golem is another very reliable way to set up Stealth Rocks, too, with the Sturdy ability, and... Um, with Sucker Punch and Earthquake and Stone Edge, he gets he hits everything in this format for something. So uh, you might see some Golem trying to use Rock Polish. I don't anticipate that because if someone's going to do that, they're going to use Rhydon. Uh, but that's probably why Golem is higher than Rhydon on this list because a lot of Rhydon want to use Horn Drill, and Golem doesn't care about Horn Drill. Uh, now between Starmie and Zapdos, uh, when I was practicing, I saw a lot of those two. But the st the sets for them were fairly standard. Um, I'm planning on running a Zapdos that I actually got from Heavy Metal Fairy on Twitter with Air Cutter from 4th Gen because that's really the best thing the Zapdos can do for special flying coverage. And you'll notice that I don't have Heat Wave because there's only one Steel type. Um, granted, this Zapdos is walled by Jolteon, but that's why we have Golem and, to a lesser extent, Clefable. So... Uh, just keep that in mind with Zapdos. It's very, very bulky. Pressure is also really nice in this format because, say, your opponent's using Machamp. He goes for a dynamic punch. You bring in Zapdos. That's already 2 PP loss from an 8 PP move. He has very, very limited uses of it. And that's assuming that your opponent bothered to use PP ups in the first place. So Zapdos can put on immense pressure, and it can go offensive with a base 100 speed. That is pretty significantly fast for this format. Uh, so definitely don't sleep on Zapdos being able to roost in your face and heal off all the damage that you did to it. Now at Starmie, I actually tinkered around with some interesting sets such as Reflect Type, but Psychic Typing is just too good to pass up here. I do expect it to see it being used mostly as an analytic uh, user. Of course, the ability analytic raises your power of your moves by 30% if you go last or if the opponent switches out. And that's basically like having a life or a boost for free if you can force something out. And so that means even if something comes in and resists a hit from Psychic or Scald or Ice Beam, it's still going to take an extra 30% of damage. So that can definitely add up in a format like this where no one has leftovers. Uh, Starmie, of course, also gets access to screens, which can be pretty annoying, and recover. Do not forget that Starmie gets recover, because a bulky one will happily recover its HP against you and then burn you with Scald, and then go on its merry way. Now in the B rank, definitely see Rhydon being used as a Rock Polish user uh, between, just like Golem, again, Quake Edge coverage with Stone Edge or Earthquake, or you might see Rock Blast just to hit multi-scale Dragonite a little bit more efficiently. Um, Horn Drill can be annoying, it can get Stealth Rocks, it can even use Mega Horn, so... Uh, Grass types are not a foolproof switch in on it, although Venusaur kind of has a field day with it as does Vileplume, because their defensive stats are good enough. Uh, Jolteon, one of the quicker Pokemon in this format, that's definitely in the top three of the fastest Pokemon in this format. And uh, that's just going to be generally really, really offensive. Its wishes are too low to really grant a lot of healing, but it can use Heal Bell, which could be annoying. Um, Baton Pass if it happens to come in and then nab some momentum. Baton Pass can be pretty annoying too, so just keep an eye out for that. 
Jolteon, even with Hidden Power Ice, kind of struggles to hurt Golem and Rhydon, so those are relatively safe checks to it because it can't get the boost from Life Orb or Choice Specs. Um, I did consider running Magneton in this format, but I did end up going with Zapdos for right now. Magneton being the only Steel type is really, really hard to pass up. Not as hard to pass up as Clefable, but that uh, it does allow it to come in for free on all the Poison type spam that will be used in this format. Um, and so you'll be able to switch Magneton in there. Unfortunately, most of the Poison types in this format also get Earthquake, but Magneton gets uh, Magnet Rise, so it's important to keep those different objects, uh, options that Magneton gets in mind. Um, doesn't really get good coverage. I even considered a, uh, a Magnet Bomb Magneton in order to hit Clefable. But Flash Cannon's better, even though it doesn't really do much after Clefable has set up. Uh, Magneton can, of course, use Thunder Wave to kind of slow things down for its team. And in fact, the premier strategy of first-gen competitive battling is to paralyze your opponent's team as much as you can. So I would expect to see that a lot. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Articuno gets the annoying combination of she uh, Sheer Cold and Mind Reader. And I would it actually has really nice defenses, even though the typing is terrible. But of course back in this generation not as many hyper offensive threats to worry about so I would expect to see some bulky ones trying to just throw around sheer colds and see what they can hit um, Nidoking I figured it would actually be higher on this list just because of its amazing coverage and again we see sheer force uh, as an ability for a kind of substitutes for the item loss and it can basically two hit KO every Pokemon in this format with the right coverage move uh, that does give it a little bit of four slot syndrome. Nidoking can run Sludge Wave or Flamethrower. Uh, it can be physical with Sucker Punch and Super Power. Of course, it gets Earth Power and Earthquake. It gets Rock type moves. Um, it can get Ice Beam. It can get Ice Punch. So it's going to be hard to see what it will hit you with. But I think after, um, for the most part, it's relatively safe to bring in a really chunky wall like Snorlax on it after you verify that it doesn't have. Superpower, for example, or if it lacks, uh, I don't know why a Nidoking would not have poison type coverage, but if it doesn't, you can bring in your Clefable on it pretty easily too. Um, Dragonite's also an okay switch in if the if you if something else goes down, you can bring in Dragonite, and then Dragonite will live uh, Ice Beam through the multi scale, so that's nice. But uh, but yeah, Nidoking is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, now with Cloyster and Venusaur, I think that their sets will be pretty predictable with Venusaur being a Sun Sweeper. And Cloyster, of course, uh, Shell Smashing. Cloyster can Rapid Spin. It's not the best Rapid Spinner. You might see it setting up Entry Hazards every now and then too. But just Shell Smash and then having uh, Ice Shard in the back to hit a lot of these faster Pokemon, especially uh, Alakazam, Gengar, and Dragonite, is going to be Cloyster's main, uh, main role. Uh, Venusaur does hit a really, really nice base speed of 80, and with Chlorophyll, you might see it either setting up its own sun. Of course, Ninetales is the only weather assist that it gets in this generation. Uh, but with Sleep Powder and even Sleep Powder and Leech Seed, it can debilitate so many Pokemon in just two or three turns, and that's all the turns that it needs to shut down a threat. So be aware that Venusaur might be running a uh, Sleep Powder set, and that's where something with Sleep Talk is really, really nice, such as Zapdos or Snorlax. Any of them can come in on Venusaur, take a hit for the most part, unless he uses Growth, and then in which case you really need some priority for it, uh, and then kind of heal off the damage. Now on this last little ranking area here, we have the B and the C rank. I'm just going to run through these really, really quickly because I think that their roles are probably pretty obvious from looking at them. The only one that I want to point out right now that a lot of people sleep on is Seeking. It's a water type that, of course, is immune to electric type moves because of its ability Lightning Rod. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you see a Seeking, if you want to hit it super effectively, you have to use Grass type moves. I don't think there's anything with Mold Breaker available in this format. So uh, Seeking can come in and it can use Horn Drill, as I recall. So uh, that can be pretty annoying. I'm not going to lie. Um, other notable Pokemon, of course, are going to be Doug Trio, who can trap a lot of Pokemon. And without uh, the assistance of items to kind of help your bulk, that can be pretty annoying. Detrio also gets access to Sucker Punch. Um, of course, in Jap 
knee sucker punches surprise attack, so you don't necessarily need fist to punch with sucker punch. So even if you outspeed Doug Trio, keep in mind it can hit you with priority. Um, I do think we'll see a good bit of Tentacruel and Aerodactyl just because of their their great typing for this competition, and then their relative niche roles, such as Aerodactyl being a nice speedy, Stealth Rock Setter a great general lead with Taunt. Um, it, unfortunately, it doesn't get Acrobatics. Aerodactyl will really like Acrobatics for this competition, but that is not available. Whereas Tentacruel can set up Toxic Spikes and Spin, and it's actually relatively difficult to take down uh, if it's especially defensive Tentacruel. It can even take a, uh, a Thunderbolt from something like Jolteon and then mirror coat the damage back. So it's very good to be aware of how your opponent is trying to use their Pokemon. Uh, so um, with Weezing, I actually was very close to using Weezing. I actually still might double back to use Weezing because it's one of my one of my favorite poison types. But with Weezing. Uh, levitate with access to pain split and a plethora especially offensive options it can even be a secondary check to something like Lefable because it does get clear smog it does get several status affliction options such as toxic or will-o-wisp it's it's pretty good in this competition I think that it should be actually ranked higher because a lot of physical Pokemon really can't touch wheezing um, even consider if if uh, if Dragonite goes for Outrage, it doesn't 2-hit KO max defense Weezing, and Weezing can burn it back in response, and then Pain split the damage away. So, um, I guess that actually might be why it's lower, because it's only reliable recovery, which is unreliable, is Pain split. But Weezing is important to keep in mind here, and of course it is just pure poison types, so that kind of leaves us susceptible to all the psychic types running around here. But that's okay. Uh, are there any other things I haven't mentioned? Um... Other random Pokemon that get Sucker Punch, Arbok is one of them. Keep that in mind. Of course, Raichu is another one of the faster Pokemon in this format. It, and Fake Out is a very real annoying threat in this format too. Uh, sand Slash can definitely set up its own sand because it's bulky enough to do so and then rush through with uh, sweep through with Sand Rush. And then if you are going to set up, make sure your opponent doesn't have a Ditto, of course, because that's going to be annoying. Uh, other random things, Magmar gets Mach Punch through Breeding, so if you think you're safe sending in your 1 HP Golem on it, no, it's just going to get Mach Punched in the face, even if you try to Sucker Punch it back. Uh, that's about it. Uh, thank you guys on Smogon for coming up with the with their ranking here. I agree with it for the most part, for sure. But, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to playing in the competition. And... The competition is not until March 3rd, so you still have plenty of time to build your teams. Be sure to go register now, though. I think registration closes after this weekend. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off because I'm going a little bit long and my voice is a little bit hoarse. I do hope I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye now.